Before we get into the video, guys, I just want to let you know that First Blood is hosting my very own tournament that you can participate in this Sunday, April 10th. It's completely free to enter, and the prize pool is $250, so round up your squad and go get that money if you can beat me of course that's right i'll also be participating in the tournament so you might get the chance to play against or beat my team it's also just a great experience if you're new to competitive trying to get into it or just want to have some fun outside of playing rank the tournament is for north american pc players only so if you're on console or from another region they have other rainbow six tournaments on their website every week one last thing is i'll also be doing a giveaway for a 280 hertz monitor paid for by first blood I'll leave the details for that and the sign up link for the tournament in the description. Thank you to First Blood for sponsoring this video, and now let's get into the stuff you came here for. How hard can it really be to plant the diffuser? Well, you'd be surprised. Firstly, I get teammates all the time who simply refuse to plant. They push in with the diffuser, get killed by a defender, we lose control of the diffuser, defenders hold it, we then have to retake the diffuser, and it's a complete mess that just ends up with us losing the round, when in reality, they could have just planted the bomb, forced the defenders to push onto us without any info, therefore giving us an advantage and us being able to win the round. You're just forcing L's on our team because you're hungry for a kill. If you're gonna do it, at least drop the bomb to your teammate to plant while you do it. Something, anything, you can do better than this. Anyway, this video is for people who are tired of that and want to just grab the diffuser and take it for themselves without getting rolled by the other team. So before we understand how to do all that, we kind of have to understand why we should be planning in the first place. What is so powerful about a plant? Because a lot of the times, even when you plant, you lose the round, right? Well, it really shouldn't be that way. Realistically, you should have a major advantage after planting the diffuser and probably convert about 95% of those rounds into wins. Siege is a game based on time, which is in the defender's favor. The attackers have to plant the bomb within the time limit or they lose the round. But once you plant the diffuser, it completely flips the script and now the defenders have to win the round before the bomb is diffused. So basically you're swapping that attacker time management to defender time management and they then have to kill everyone and defuse before the time is up. So basically the ball's in the defender's court and now they have to kill all the attackers and defuse the diffuser before running out of time. That's so confusing. Why did they do that? Like I said before, planting, in my opinion, is one of the most misused mechanics in the game and way too often the defenders actually retake successfully and defuse the bomb. Let me give you an example of how strong planting the diffuser really is. Everybody knows the classic garage defense on consulate with the three panels and the attackers plant the bomb and they can stand a million meters back to defend it. They could be really anywhere to defend this diffuser because it's in the middle of the open after you plant, of course, on the front of the white truck. This is an example of, my opinion, the easiest post plant in the game. You plant the bomb, you run outside as far as you can, you have better guns as attackers, you have drones for info so you can see when they're diffusing, you have a million different angles you could be holding, and this is just not fun to be in. And you know, as a defender, if you win this gunfight, then you feel like an absolute legend because this is definitely a tough one to win. Now you understand a little bit about how strong planning the diffuser is. So throughout this video, you'll understand a bit better of how to actually set up those post plants so that you can translate all those rounds into wins. We'll talk a little more about setting up those post plants later in the video, but for now, let's focus on actually getting that bomb planted. So to avoid dying while planting the bomb, you wanna minimize the risk necessary to do it. So this is why you'll wanna preemptively determine a plant spot based on farts. Not those kind of farts, guys. I'm talking about the F-A-R-T-S of planning. Farts. So what does farts stand for? Well, the F stands for foresight. Foresight means what could the defenders possibly do to stop the plant? What sort of utility could they use to stop the plant in this specific spot? That would be anybody left up with a nitro cell, smoke grenades, echo drones, maestro cams, and I think that's it, but I might be missing anything else that will kill you while you're planning. Goyos, I guess. So having the foresight to know if they're gonna throw a nitro cell at you or a smoke or whatever it may be, lets you determine whether or not you can plant in a default spot that's safe to do so with cover from the doorways, or if you have to pick a weird off spot so that they don't know where you're planning so that way they miss their utility. Either that, or it means you have to bait out a nitro or two by faking the plant and running out and baiting out a nitro, etc. Moving on to the A. The A in farts stands for R. You safe are you safe to plant are you in a safe spot knowing whether you're safe comes down to a very simple set of things 
seeing what angles the defenders have open on the plant and knowing where they could swing out from, peek you from, or actually see you from. So those are the angles that you want to make sure your teammates are covering before you go for the plant. General note, planting in the middle of the open is going to expose you to as many angles as possible, so probably not a good move. Unless you like throw a smoke grenade down first and plant in a smoke grenade, which that's one of my personal favorite tactics. I don't have the bomb, bro. The R in fart stands for read, read the room. Read the room means look around you, see where your teammates actually are, and even if you have anybody to cover you while you plant the bomb. The worst thing is having five people alive, thinking that your teammates are covering you, and then have someone run through the site and shoot you in the face as you're planting the bomb in cover. Just not fun. So before you go for that plant, look around, see what teammates are actually covering you, and maybe even ask your teammates, yo, are you holding this? Can you watch this? I'm gonna go for a plant here. So reading the room and actually figuring out what is going on before you go for that plant is key. Another thing about reading the room is if you rush into the bomb site, get a couple kills, you're like, oh, I have sight, I can plant the bomb, and you plant the bomb, and then you die, they're just gonna defuse with none of your teammates around to cover. So also, just obviously just not a good move. The T stands for timing. Timing the plant is super important. You could time the plant off getting a major kill, like killing the anchor in sight, like a smoke. You could time the plant off of flashbangs or grenades. So those flashbangs can actually block off an entire angle while you're planting the bomb. If you have a teammate throwing a flashbang every three seconds kind of at a doorway, then they're not gonna be able to come through that doorway because it'll be completely blind. Off a grenade, grenades are super loud. It makes it really hard to hear the plant. And if they don't have any cameras or info on the plant, they probably won't even know that you're planting. Timing it with your teammates pushing through the site is also really strong. There's a lot of situations where maybe you don't have what it takes to cover so instead of having everyone hold angles while you plant, get your whole team to push through while you plant. That way they're causing a distraction, they might be getting a couple kills, you get the bomb down, and then you're able to go play that post plant afterwards and whoever else is alive at that point. And finally, we get to the S in farts, which is setting up a post plant. This is the last key factor you need to take into account before you plant. Is your bomb spot post plantable, meaning are you able to get to a far away angle or an angle above the site where you can actually actively watch that diffuser without them hiding behind the bomb and diffusing or hiding behind a wall and diffusing? Usually planting somewhere that is right on the edge of the site so that you can hold it from far away or planting under a hatch or something that you can see down from is one of the best ways to do it because otherwise if they know where you're at in the post plant and you're not able to see the diffuser, they will simply get on it and diffuse. And that is probably the biggest reason why you're actually losing these post plants is that you picked a bad spot to post plant from. So you've taken your farts steps, you've planted the diffusers successfully. So what are some more tips for playing this post plant? You've set up the post plant, you've planted the bomb, but how do you actually play the post plant? First things first, hide like a bitch. Hiding like a bitch is probably the best move in a post plant. The defender doesn't know where you are. You could be tucked around a doorway, you could be tucked around another wall, you could be above them, you could be below them, they don't know. So basically, as a defender, they have to push up, retake, find you, and then kill you. And if they don't, well, you're gonna peek out and kill them when they try to defuse. So essentially all a post plan is, is a game of hide and seek. You're hiding, the defenders are seeking, and they have a very limited time to do it. And if they don't find you within that time, you are going to win. This is why you can sit in the room above and sit on a drone and just simply wait for them to defuse. You can sit in a room far away. You don't even have to be close enough to hear them defuse as long as you can see them defusing if you need to. So hide around a corner, hop on a drone, and wait for them to defuse. That's when you peek out, and you kill them. So now that we know when and how to plant, we have to talk about not planning at all. Either one, they have so much utility to stop the plant that you simply are gonna get screwed trying to go for the plant, AKA there's 30 seconds and there's three goyos and three smokes and a nitro and an echo cam. Any of that stuff is probably gonna stop you. Or there's 15 seconds left, but there's two echo cams and you don't know where they're at. And this guy's using them to stop the plant. You get echoed once, that's when you hop off and you say, we gotta kill this motherfucker, especially if he's the last alive. Another time where you can't plant is when you have a serious man disadvantage. Now this is also one of the greatest time to plants, depending on the circumstance. So let's say it's a 2v5 and your teammate wants to cover you. He's telling you to put the bomb down and he's got an LMG. He's just mowing through the site, an entire cross in the site, and you're there sticking the bomb, hoping you don't get nitros. Maybe you bait out a couple nitros, etc. 
it's probably gonna be tough to plant but maybe this is what wins you the round because getting that bomb down they'll have to again retake this guy's mowing them down as they sprint through the middle of the open if you win your gunfights that's a pretty good chance that you could win that round from a 2v5 now say it's a 2v5 and you can't plant you don't have the control necessary there's nowhere to actually plant what do you do now you got to find an opening onto site. That's really your best bet of winning a 2v5. You and your teammate need to work together the best you can to clear out one of the two sites in order to plant the bomb. Because again, planting that bomb is going to win you that 2v5 unless the entire defense sprints at you for absolutely no reason, which doesn't happen much, but it but I I don't know what the lower ranks are like, but who knows.